Hello, this is Jackie. In this video, let's watch an American crime film, Cash. Sam and his wife lived at the bottom of society, both husband and wife had low income, they had to save money and repay the mortgage every month, the tremendous pressure made Sam depressed all day, not knowing what to do. After Sam sent his wife to work one day, he ushered in another area under an overpass. A suitcase fell from the sky and hit Sam's car. Looking at the pit on the car, Sam was furious. He was worried about repaying the mortgage and had no spare money to repair the car. Angrily, Sam threw the box into the garbage dump. At this time, a banknote appeared in the seam of the box. Sam quickly picked up the box and found that it was full of money. This huge windfall made Sam ecstatic. He rushed to the bank immediately. Seeing that his wife Leslie was negotiating with the bank manager to postpone the debt, Sam, who now had money, became tough. He first humiliated the manager who had always been superior to them. Then in the manager's surprised look, he spent more than $7,000 to pay the rest of the mortgage. As soon as they got home, the couple couldn't help but count the money. Excluding more than $7,000 spent, more than $610,000 were left in the box. While excited, Leslie was a little scared she thought this unknown money was dirty. Sooner or later, keeping them would cause disaster. Sam explained to her, no one was around there at the time. No one would know that he got the money. Sam advised Leslie that they could take this huge sum of money to buy luxury goods that they didn't even think about before. The temptation was so great that Leslie was gradually moved and agreed with Sam's ideas. Immediately, the two came to the furniture market to send the money. They went to the car showroom and spent more than $70,000 to buy a Land Rover. They didn't know at this moment, the owner of the money had already started to investigate. Actually, the money was just like Leslie guessed. It was the drug dealer who threw down the bridge while evading the police. After the drug dealer went to prison, he told his killer brother, Pike, the news about the money. He promised to share the money equally with Pike. Getting such a good deal, Pike agreed with him. From the drug dealers, Pike got two important news. There was a dilapidated tourist car near the suitcase. By the side of the wooden cart, the owner was a white man. Most importantly, the one who picked up money would spend cash. They would use the cash to buy a new car. So Pike found a car showroom, he handed over $50 to ask the salesman what would happen if someone bought a car with cash. The salesman told him that this kind of situation rarely occurred, and he had seen it once or twice. If he met this kind of customer, the showroom usually sent the payment form to the headquarters with a cash stamp. At night, the killer sneaked into the car headquarters and took away all the cash transaction records there. He went to the car owner one by one according to the address. Pike went to a paid market research and asked the owner what he wanted to know then used force to get back his money. Finally, the killer found Sam. During the conversation, Pike suddenly changed his expression. Sam also realized something was wrong. But it was too late, Pike had revealed his identity. Under the threat of Pike, Sam had to admit the truth. Pike was thankful that Sam didn't spend too much. But for tax evasion, Sam deposited the remaining money in multiple banks. After that, they drove to the major banks to withdraw the money. They planned to go to Leslie's home to get the remaining $200,000 back. Before going to bed, Leslie was going to call the police but was stopped by Sam. Sam analyzed that the police would ask them many questions, they might lose the new car and the furniture they just bought. But there was no free meal in the world. Pike was not that careless. After getting the money back from Leslie, he went to the hotel to check out. Just because the hotel owner didn't refund a deposit, Pike almost killed him. Seeing Pike walking out of the hotel with blood on his body, the couple was so scared that they did not dare to resist. Pike tied them up and went to the prison to meet his twin brother. The drug dealer was overjoyed and advised the killer to stop worrying about the money. After all, more than $500,000 had been taken back, so forget about the spent $70,000. But Pike was extremely stubborn and must get the rest of the money back. Moreover, the accounts were calculated clearly, the figures were all rounded up. Pike first took away Sam and Leslie's phones. Then he warned Sam to pay off the balance within five days. Without a plan, Sam had to sell the car to collect money, but the new car was 20% off. Even if it was just bought for more than 70,000 yesterday, it was worth only more than 5 square meters of land today. For the remaining 20,000, the killer made up the idea of Sam's house. Leslie was extremely unwilling. For this reason, she did not hesitate to burst out and got out of the car to call the police. Looking at the handgun deliberately exposed, Sam was startled in a cold sweat. He knew that if they didn't have the money, they would not live to tomorrow. Sam hurriedly dragged Leslie into the car and decided to borrow the money from the bank. Pike seemed to understand the mortgage regulations. He was plausible, and his remarks were well-founded. The bank manager was happy to lend Sam the money. But in terms of the current two-person conditions, he could only apply for high-interest small loans. Now there were only 10,000 left to pay off. 
Sam was aggrieved and angry, but also helpless. They tried to escape late at night, but Pike had already taken precautions and took the two back to the house. In the remaining four days, Pike forced the couple to rob the store. Pike handed Sam a pistol without bullets and a phone. If he didn't do it, Pike would make Leslie's head bloom on the spot. The two Sam and Mary alternated back and forth and ran away after grabbing the money. At the end of the day, they collected more than $2,000 in total. They changed their turns and continued to rob 10 stores. In two days, they almost got nearly $6,000. The TV news also reported this successive robbery case. At this moment, Sam was not only burdened with high interest loans but also forced to become a robber. The long-standing anger finally made him break out. Pike was challenged and beat Sam to the ground. He was still reluctantly riding on Sam and continuing to beat him. Pike was lucky enough to stop until Leslie rushed over to persuade him. That night, Leslie was tossed and awake, and she couldn't bear to see her husband in pain. She dressed up carefully, turned on her charm skills, and came to the killer. Pike suddenly became charmed. At the last moment, Pike suddenly became vigilant. He felt that Leslie had dedicated herself inexplicably and must have come to grab his gun, so he drove Leslie back to her room. Early the next morning, Sam refused to loot the store again, he asked to rob the bank directly, so he didn't have to be squandered anymore. Pike bluntly said that robbing the bank at Sam's level was no good at all. Besides, this kind of thing should be prepared in advance. Sam was very angry. He told Pike that after the previous robberies, the major shops would definitely be prepared. They only have two days left, they would rob the bank, or they would have more time to pay the debt. But Pike was very particular about the original plan, saying that five days was five days. From this point of view, the only way to get money was to rob the bank. After that, Sam and Pike put on stockings and raided the bank. While controlling the security, Sam found the bullet from the security's gun. After they quickly robbed and escaped, Sam took out the $6,000 owed, then spread all the other money on the road. Pike stopped the car and asked Sam for the pistol. As everyone knew, Sam had already been the hunter at this moment. Sam showed off the bullet and pointed a gun at Pike's head to ask him for his true identity. Pike made a sloppy look and grabbed the gun. At the same time, he took out his pistols and warned the two people. But two fists were hard to beat with four hands. During the fight, Pike died under Sam's gun. After that, the couple drove the car to the scrapped bus station, they stuffed the staff with some money to destroy Pike and his car. In the end, Sam and Mary got another $600,000. They returned all the money that was robbed from the store and bank. It also compensated the people injured because of them. This time, no one would know where this deal was going. As the saying goes, every misfortune that comes your way could be a blessing in disguise. When a windfall fell from the sky who would know the blessings and curses behind it? Well, this video ends here. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, see you next time.